Hello, Taste Buddies. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Today, I'm all about pies, both sweet and savory. I'll give you my recipes for a bright blueberry pie, an ultra smooth French silk pie, and a beef pie from Cornwall, England, by way of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. They're all next on SoFlo Taste. A. Eh? This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida's more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Buds and welcome to SoFlo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. From your favorite diner to those lip burning things they have at fast food restaurants, pies come in all fillings, shapes, and sizes. So today I thought it would be fun to give you a couple of my favorite sweet or dessert pie recipes and a savory or dinner one as well. So let's get cooking. We're gonna start out with the sweet one. We're gonna make a French silk pie. Basically, a, kind of like a chocolate cream pie, but it's called a French silk pie. You start off with some water, eggs, and sugar, and we're gonna start whipping that up. Once that is well combined, you're gonna put this over a bain-marie, and we're gonna let this go until it comes to 160 degrees. Once that comes to 160 degrees, you actually remove it from the heat and then you keep whisking it until it cools off completely. It'll get nice and thick. So here's the desired thickness. It's just beautiful and really, really creamy. So the next thing we're gonna do is with the mixer, we're gonna go ahead and add in some melted chocolate. And this is just some deep dark chocolate that has melted in the microwave. So let me add that in. Make sure you use a rubber spatula because you don't wanna miss out on any chocolate whatsoever. We're gonna go ahead and add in a little vanilla extract. And little by little, you'll see me adding in the butter. Once the butter is fully incorporated, You'll take some nice, stiffly whipped cream and fold that in. Now, as you see, there is already a pie shell in front of me. We made that ourselves out of um, something called pâte sucré. Sucré meaning sugar, so pâte meaning dough, and it's, uh, so it's a sweet pie dough. Just make sure you fold this until there's no more streaks. You want it really well combined. You can also obviously buy an already made pie shell, but if you're going through the trouble of making the filling, it's not that big of a deal to make delicious pie dough. You can find the recipe for that on our website at sofalataste.com, by the way. All right, so this is done. Go ahead and fill your pie shell with this delicious creamy filling. And I have decided not to make, which is shocking, any whipped cream topping or any meringue topping of any kind because I just think that this pie kind of speaks for itself. And you will need this to set in your fridge overnight because you want it to be really nice and cold and set so that you can slice into it. And let me show you what that looks like. 
So that it's been setting in the fridge overnight. I just think it's gorgeous. Let's go ahead and slice into it. Have I cut it too small for y'all? What do you think? I don't know. This to me is like, oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> I think that's a perfect piece of pie. All right, while I dig in, you guys can just come right back because I've got so many more pies for you. But I just want to assure you that I'm keeping my distance from the rest of the local 10 crew. I guess they're not having any pie. And they're all wearing, <laughs> oh, come on, guys. They're all wearing very attractive masks, by the way, which I'm happy they are. And for you at home, masks up, SoFlo. Come right back. I have so much more pie you can't even imagine. Mm. Mm, so good. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and my show all about pies. Now, as you know, all of my recipes are available on the SoFlo Taste webpage. And by pointing your phone's camera at this quick response code, you'll be taken directly to the SoFlo Taste recipe page. Pretty easy, right? All right, so moving on. I would love to teach y'all how to make something called pasties. Pasties, that I thought was called a pasty or a patsy, is a patsy, is not. It's a <laughs> anyway, whatever it is, it's delicious. It kind of looks like an empanada. So I was um, in Minnesota this summer and I saw something that looked like an empanada but bigger and a little thicker and um, I asked the lady behind the counter what kind of empanadas they were, and I guess I offended her because she immediately said, that is not an empanada, that is a pasty. So a pasty is a, an English, normally meat pie, hand pie, uh, from Cornwall. Originally, it was really created for miners that really needed to just eat with one hand. So they develop these meat pies. Traditionally, they're made with some type of a meat, like a skirt steak or a sirloin. We got this at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. They gave us some beautiful cut up sirloin steak. And we decided to use that. And I love the idea that these meat pies cook the meat as the pastry cooks. So everything is really juicy on the inside. Whereas an empanada, we cook everything in a pan and then we stuff them. So I kind of went half and half. Instead of rutabaga, only because personally it's not my favorite vegetable, I decided to use turnips instead because I love turnips. So I sauteed in just some olive oil, uh, onions, turnips, and potatoes. That's what this is. And I have this raw sirloin because I really wanted all the juices to flow inside of our uh, hand pie. And so we're just going to combine those two things together. And most recipes had a lot of black pepper. So I'm going equal parts of salt and black pepper in this pasty recipe. So that's basically it. Now as far as the dough for these pasties, you take baking powder, flour, and salt, and you put it into a food processor. Then you add butter, and once that is combined, you just add some egg yolk and water. And then you have it. So this, these are two uh, pasty doughs rolled out. As you can see, they're quite a bit bigger than an empanada dough would be rolled out. And I used just a small salad plate to cut it out. Um, and it's a little bit thicker than I would normally do an empanada dough as well. But to make the pasty, you basically just take this filling, and I try to put as much of it as I can, because you want these pasties to be as full as possible. I don't know, if you've ever had a hollowed out hand pie, it's just like the worst. So you really want it to be full. So you take an egg wash, and this is a little bit of cream with egg yolk. And you just brush the inside of the dough together. We're gonna bring over one side of the dough towards you. And as you're pushing in the filling, you are making sure that all of the seams meet perfectly. And then, because it really reminds me of a true pie, I'm gonna press it down, making sure that it's all sealed, and then 
I'm going to basically do as I do when I make pie. I'm going to take both of my pointer fingers and I'm kind of crimping them together to form just like I do the outside of my pie shells. And then you can dust a sheet pan or a cookie sheet like this with either if you have any semolina or cornmeal or as I just used a little bit of flour that's totally cool. Then you want to take a nice sharp knife. I'm going to take a paring knife and make a couple of slits because it will be very juicy. Remember your meat is cooking inside so you will have juices flowing out of your pasty and this cooks for almost an hour. We, we're going about 45 minutes to an hour on this. Um, you're going to want to brush it on the outside again with your egg wash to make it really shiny and pretty. One more time just to make sure these come out just beautifully presentable. And if you feel like it, you can put a little bit of some big crunchy salt on the outside, you know, have a little fun with it. You can go crazy once you're used to it. And let's pull out the pasties that we've got baking. So this is our pasty. It's delicious, it's hot, it's really hot. So when you all come back, let's go ahead and lift that up off the tray and take a look at what it's like on the inside. And then of course, I have the best for the finale. So please come back. Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. So flow taste as we always are. We're here at J World in Coconut Creek, a great place for kids. For more information on what's going on here in 2021, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to the food. So let's check it out. I um, I have only tried this once. Oh, I made a pasty. I'm going to have a little tiny taste of the pasty. I've never um, made the traditional. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like, but it's delicious. So I'm going to keep that open like that. All right, moving on. I saved the best for last. I was looking up blueberry pie. I found Stella Park's recipe for blueberry pie, and I loved everything she made. I decided to make her blueberry pie. So. Um, for the filling, you take fresh blueberries and you add wild blueberries. Now, we can't find wild blueberries uh, too often here in South Florida, but I went back in my freezer where I keep some frozen berries to make smoothies and I realized that every single blueberry in my freezer happened to be a wild blueberry. I don't know how that was possible. And it's got all this delicious natural juice and you wanna use all that as well. So let's add the wild blueberry and its liquid to the regular blueberry. You'll want to add some sugar, some salt, some lemon juice. I loved that she added coriander, which has the same essential oils as in the blueberry, as well as tapioca starch. Now the one thing I will tell you to be careful with tapioca starch is, it's wonderful for binding things, but it doesn't work until it's settled down and it's come to room temperature. So if you try to eat this pie hot, it's just gonna stew out and, and be all runny. But if you wait until it comes to room temperature, I promise you, it will come together. So mix that up really well until you see no lumps and no pieces of white starch or sugar at all. So, all right, so you see how this is really well mixed. There's no lumps in there. There's no pieces of anything. It's all mixed really well together. So uh, this dough was made earlier and put in the fridge and then we rolled it out. We put it on the shell and you really wanna cool this for about half an hour till it's really set. Uh, and then you pour in the filling. Next thing, a little bit of egg wash. 
She adds salt into it and she says that the salt allows the uh, dough to stay very crispy. It's just a little bit of cream, salt, and egg. Mm, just so you know. And now let's go ahead and make this gorgeous pie. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, let's see, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's go with five pieces for our lattice work. Two, three, four, five, I want six. I'm gonna make six and I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna do that. Six. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off some pieces off the ends and we're gonna make another piece from what we cut off. So now we're gonna pull back two and we're gonna pull back two and we're gonna add one there and one there and one there. I'm gonna bring it back here and bring it back there. And then we're gonna pull it back this way. And this is where we're gonna cheat it a little bit. So I've got this piece here and I think I can come up with one more piece by cutting off the ends here. There we go. Yay! Okay, so I'm gonna put this here like this and just like that. And let's just pretend that I knew what I was doing. All right, bring that back down, bring that back down. All right, now we've got a little lattice going on and what we're gonna do is just press everything back into shape. Bring everything back to the original shell to make it seem like it was all supposed to look like that. Just kind of curl it in a little bit. Then uh, she very specifically talks about brushing your dough with egg wash, but not making it very clumpy. So you really want to make sure that every little piece of dough is brushed with the wash, but just don't overdo it. So if you want to, you can take some turbinado sugar. You know what that is? It's sugar in the raw. Um, and you can actually put that on top of, get it to stick to the egg wash. And um, it's really delicious. It's a good crunch to have on a pie. So there you have it. So she also recommends, which I really appreciated, uh, to place your pie on top of a piece of parchment paper over a cookie sheet so that you can protect your oven more than anything because if you go straight in with a pie, there's gonna be drippings of blueberry everywhere. Let's go in. So this is how the pie came out. I just think it is absolutely stunning. Isn't it beautiful? When my husband saw it this morning, he was a little upset that I was bringing that onto the show. I can't believe I, he didn't get a piece before I left home today. Come right back and let's see what the inside of this pie really looks like. expert Elena Capra. The Soflo Hour continues with Soflo Home Project next on Local 10. Now, back to Chef Michelle and her food. Welcome back to Soflo Taste and our show all about sweet and savory pies. So this is my gorgeous blueberry pie. I'm going to cut into it. I'm going to make sure that I make a very small cut because my husband's going to want the rest. Don't worry guys, I have one for you in the oven. Okay. 
Now let's see. I don't want to break it too much, but here we go. The first cut is always the hardest, right? Oh, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy. Pies are a wonderful thing. They can be a meal, top off a meal, or even be breakfast. I hope I've given you some new recipes or maybe just some new ideas on how to update your favorite pie recipes. Next week, I'm honoring all women by honoring three of them. I'm celebrating International Women's Month with recipes from three of my favorite chefs who just happen to be women. Julia's Mussels, Marcella's Chicken, and Hetty's Biscotti are all on my menu, so join me next week. Now let's check in with the talented Elena Capra. Hello, Elena. What are you doing today on Simple Home Project? Hi, Michelle. So I absolutely love renovating small spaces like this kitchen. It's such a great design challenge. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, it's all about efficient use of space and maximizing square footage. Thank you, my dear. We'll be watching. So taste buds, and you are all my taste buds. Please be smart, be safe, and be well, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye, and good taste. Bye.